piggybacking off of this idea of the total rate of change, we're going to talk briefly about total distance traveled. All right, so if we think about all the history we have with particle motion, we know that there's a position function, and if we derive that position function, we have the velocity function, and if we derive the velocity function, we have the acceleration function. So one thing which the AP writers like to do is talk about the total distance traveled, all right? And how exactly are we going to find that? So you see there with the bullet points in the notes, um, let's say we have the situation. You're on a straightaway on one of the high school running tracks, and you've got um, some movement happening. So you move 20 meters forward, okay? So, and then you move backwards 10 meters, okay? Then you move forward... 15 meters before moving back again five meters all right now there's different questions that we can ask based off of those four movements all right the one that i want to focus on right now is what's the total distance traveled okay now the answer is not going to be that um, we moved 20 meters okay ultimately we are 20 meters closer to the finish line than we were when we started walking but the total distance that we traveled well, it was 20 meters plus another 10 meters plus another 15 meters plus another 5 meters. So we have 20 plus 10 is 30 plus 15 is 45 plus another 5 gives us a grand total of 50 meters that we travel. That's the total distance that we travel. All right, so let's put that down. Total distance. All right, that's 50 meters. Okay. But how do we work on this from a calculus perspective, all right? Well, before we get to the calculus, let's go back to these values right here. Because notice that some of the values are positive and some of the values were negative, but we always added, all right? We were adding no matter what we wanted our negative values to become positive. How do we work on that in mathematics? How do we make something which is negative and turn it into a positive? Yeah, exactly. It's through the absolute value. And that's what's going to happen overall with this total distance traveled as well. All right. Now, we know that total distance can be covered, goes way back to those marathon videos from a couple months ago. All right. It's just the integral of the velocity. All right. So if we take the integral of our velocity function, all right, that means that we're summing up all the velocity. All right. Well, here's our velocities. We sum them all up but we don't get the 50 unless we make the negative numbers positive. So we're gonna bring in absolute value markers. All right, so we have the absolute value of the velocity dt. If we take that integral from our start time to our end time, that's gonna be the total distance traveled. So whenever something comes up in regards to total distance on the exam or homework or whatever with calculus, just understand that it's all about the absolute value of the velocity. That's what's going to be in the integrand, not just the velocity itself, because if the velocity is not involving the absolute value, that's when we produce positive, negative, positive, negative, and we get a final answer of 30 meters as opposed to, uh, excuse me, of uh, not 30, of, uh, of 20 meters, as opposed to the actual total distance traveled, which would be 50. All right, so if you're asked about total distance, it's going to be absolute value of the velocity inside the integrand. All right, so you'll see that now with a few examples and have your graphing calculators ready.